sometimes in our culture and this generation, we feel like we're all by ourselves. We feel like nobody understands us. We feel like we're all alone. And let me ask this question. I need every, every junior and every freshman in this room to own this question. And I don't care about the friends that are around you. This is you and me. And this is real, man. And it is real. And this is our life. And this is our future. How many of you knew in here, if you were 100% honest with yourself, truthfully being genuine with your feelings and your emotions, are there times in your story, in your life, do you sometimes feel honestly like nobody understands you? And honestly, sometimes you feel like you're all by yourself. Raise your hand. Hold them high, man. And hands go up all across the room. You know why? Because even though we feel like we're all alone, you're not the only person who feels like that. Hands were everywhere. Many of us feel the way you're feeling. Adults feel the way you're feeling. People feel the way you're feeling. But what you can't do is be impulsive and think that making a forever decision to end it solves it. It doesn't. You're robbing you of your destiny. You're robbing people around you that believe in you. I promise you, there is a fear of talking. But when you begin to talk, and I know there's a fear sometimes of, man, what will happen if I say this? This is going to happen, then this is going to happen. And what if, and what if, and what if? We what if, and this anxiety thing grows. And 99.9% .9 of the times when you actually talk about it, it never turns out nearly as bad as what you think it is. It's that fear of the unknown. I promise you, I ripped my mask off 10 years ago, man. And I've never experienced more freedom, more success, more peace of mind. I realized life isn't about just existing. It's about experiencing all that life has for us and in this room is greatness I promise you and for me my wreck happened 23 years old I go to prison for 15 sentenced to 15 years in prison and it would have been real easy for me to throw in the towel it would have been real easy for me to say, you know what, I give up. I come from a broken family, suicidal thoughts, self-harm, eating disorders. I've been homeless. I found myself sleeping on the streets. I stole from friends. I had been labeled by everybody around me. I battled drug addictions, you name it. I had experienced it. It would have been real easy if there was anybody that could have said, you know what, my past is bigger than my future. I give up. It would have been me. But I remember something that my father taught me when I was that kid. When he told me at the end of the day, Nathan, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's hope in your heart, don't you dare quit. And he taught me that through that basketball experience that I had when he beat the brakes off of me playing basketball. And he told me at the end of the day, Nathan, don't compare yourself. Don't give up. See the problem? I, his, he was the... He was the problem keeping me from reaching, making buckets and making goals. And he said, listen, Nathan, see the problem, identify the problem, then figure out the solution. Don't let the problem consume you. Be consumed with answers and solutions, and you don't stop until you figure it out. Giving up is not an option. And so today, this year two talk, this year three talk, this talk that I'm about to give on to you guys, man, these are things that I have learned in the last 10 years of my life when I got released in 2000 and what year was it? 2013, six years ago. I didn't do 15 years. I got released 11 years early. Why? Because the first off, I took control of my life. And what I mean by that, I know as young men and as young ladies and as people, there are things that happen to us that we have no control over, no influence in. We didn't ask for it. We just have to deal with it. Broken families, losing loved ones, verbal, mental, and emotional, physical abuses that have happened to us. Some of us have experienced real, tragic, traumatic, difficult situations that we didn't ask for, but it was like somebody put this plate of food and puts it right in front of you and says, this is your life, deal with it. And you're like, man, I don't want it, but it's yours to figure it out. And for some of us, We've had to deal with life consequences because of our poor choices and our poor decisions. And we put our back against the wall because of some of the poor mistakes that we've made. And we gotta kinda own those. And when I went to prison, it would've been really easy for me to say, you know what, I give up, I didn't ask and deserve some of these things. Some of these things were my own, my, my own poor choices, my wreck, my accident, my drugs, my addictions. But I didn't ask for my mom or my dad to be broken out of my family. But you know what I realized, y'all? I was allowing things that I had no control over to control me. I used to blame my dad for everything growing up as a kid. 
I blamed him for my attitude. I blamed him for my drug use. I blamed him for my how I treated others. I blamed him when I skipped school. He was my excuse for everything. And at the end of the day, I had no control over that situation, but I was giving it all the control over me. I had to first off recognize something. I'm not going to allow things that I have no control over to control me. I can control how I react. I can control how I respond. And I can control what I do going forth. I took control of my, my life. Make good choices. Great things happen. Take ownership. Stop making excuses. You know what our culture lacks right now? We lack the ability to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, and forgive me. We want to we want to put blame on anybody else and everybody else around us. I've learned when I've made mistakes, I just own it, man. Not because at the end of the day I'm embarrassed, but I know we're all beautifully broken. We all make mistakes. We've all got stuff somehow, some way. And I've learned my mistakes set me up for future wins because I don't lose in life. I win or I learn. I win or I learn. And I may make a mistake, but I own it radically, emphatically. I don't play the blame game. If I was wrong, I make it, I claim it, and I move forward. Because at the end of the day, man, life's about progress. And so for me, 2009 when my wreck happened, 10 years ago, I wrote those words, and this is kind of what we talked about the end of last year for some of us, the juniors. I wrote those words, changed the world, slapped on my little prison wall. And I decided then to take control of my life, Priscilla's family, They asked me to do two things. First off, they radically forgave me, and I don't know why. They forgave me, and that's a whole other story for another day, for another talk, for another venue. This family forgave me, and they said, Nathan, we don't think that one dumb choice should destroy two families' lives. But they asked me to do two things. Don't let our daughter die for nothing, and try to make the world a better place. And I said yes, and I didn't even know what that meant. But I know when I went to that prison, at the end of the day, I wasn't going to look at my circumstances. I wasn't going to look at everything around me. At the end of the day, I was going to be present in the moment, present with my current reality, and absolutely do the best that I could to grow day in and day out with personal growth and personal development. When I came against things that I didn't agree with, or I came against with, against people that I didn't agree with, or I came against an authority at the prison, man, I used to buck authority all the time, I hated authority, but when I had to realize something at the end of the day, if I can't learn to respect people, if I can't learn to respect those around me, if I can't learn to respect the people who are in charge of me, how am I ever going to learn to respect my dream? Because if you don't respect that dream, that thing that's inside of you, and you know what that thing is, that thing that you're passionate about, that thing that you, if you could do anything in the world, that would be your reality that would be your future that thing that's big that dream that's massive that thing if you don't learn to respect people you're never going to learn to respect that dream because unless you respect your dreams and give them your time your effort your sacrifice your focus unless you're willing to actually take the time to invest in that dream it's never going to become real it's called respect and the best way I've learned to respect my dream was to respect people the best way I've learned to respect my Myself was respect people, letting people's lives have value and understanding that people, people that can speak into my life, that can help me learn, man, that's tough. Dude, that was the hardest part I had, that was the hardest thing I had to deal with. So here I was in prison, facing 15 years, I wrote Change the World, slapping on my bathroom mirror. And I didn't realize it, but I developed these five habits in my heart and my mind that's changed my life. I call them the five. And it wasn't until about 18 months ago that I realized I had developed these attitudes and these characteristics and these habits that's helped me be 10 years sober. That's helped me be 10 years since I thought of it in my life. That's helped me be 10 years since I've self-harmed. It's helped me be 10 years since I've had an eating disorder. That's helped me 10 years overcome depression, anxiety, all these issues. It's these habits that I've developed and I've, I've now recognized it was these things that I was intentional of wanting to be better at. It's changed my life. And I call them the five and they're simply this I learned to be transparent I learned to be accountable I learned to work hard I learned to make good choices and I had to value people 